smash guess the correct answer or get a surprise how much money do Americans spend on Easter candy each year a twelve thousand seven hundred and eighty nine dollars B 1.9 billion dollars or C two dollars and ninety nine cents B. $1.9 billion. How many jelly beans do Americans eat during Easter? A. 29 million. B. 20 million. Or C. 16 million. C. 16 million. How many marshmallow peeps do Americans buy each year? A. 175,000 B. 700 million or C. 950 trillion Seven hundred million. How many chocolate bunnies are made in America each year? A. Ninety million. B. Seventy-eight million. Or C. Thirty-five million. A. Ninety million. 
Which part of a chocolate bunny do 76% of people eat first? A. The feet B. The ears or C. The tail B. The ears Our Easter episode. This year for our Easter celebration, we've invited our good friend Jason who's gonna come and talk to us about how one man saved the world. Like Superman. Well, actually, I think you're going to see that Jesus did things differently than anyone expected. I'm Jason, and it's story time. And like any good story, this one starts way back, before math and science and puppies and chickens and eggs and sidewalks, before us. There was nothing, just a beginning the beginning of everything, and the beginning was God. God in three parts, God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And the three parts of God were together. They were like chilling like family. Everything was perfect. It was so good that God wanted to share some of it with us. And so he made the universe and everything, and then we made sidewalks, and it was good, but then it wasn't. And it wasn't just Adam and Eve and some apple that messed everything up for us. No, all of us, one at a time, we've taken steps away from God. And here's the thing, steps away from God is steps away from love and life, which is steps towards death and hate. And that is a problem. And so God sent the law as a way to delay death. But remember, God didn't just want to delay death. He wanted to give love and life. So he started getting the word out that he was going to send one man to save the world. And so naturally, people started expecting someone to come and kill all the bad guys and become like the president of everything who makes our lives easier. But God had other plans. Since the beginning of time, people could tell something was off. The world was broken. Human beings were capable of building and doing good work, but also they seemed bent on destroying beautiful things. The Old Testament defines this evil that leads humans to bad choices. It's called sin and it consumes hearts. People who followed God understood humanity's only hope was a savior who could take away our sins and save the world. But they had major expectations. They expected this savior would come to earth in a triumphant way, like in a rocket ship. But in reality, his birth was a small debut in a small animal trough. They expected their hero would be a warrior that would pick up a sword and lead a strong rebellion. In reality, he was a carpenter and demonstrated how to live in peace with God and others. They expected a holy exterminator who would burn sin out of the world. In reality, he traveled through towns, restoring lives and teaching how to say no to sin. They expected a political superstar who would punish all challengers. In reality, he called himself a shepherd and told us to forgive our enemies. They expected a bold king to come and immediately enlarge their territory. In reality, he took the role of a servant and spoke of God's eternal kingdom. They expected a judge to chop down the unworthy but his reality was full of mercy, and he encouraged others to do the same. The expectation was vengeance. The reality was grace. The expectation was a battle. The reality was a sacrifice. Jesus came to save the world and reset our expectations from the past, present, and future. Because our expectation was death, but his reality is life. Every time I hear the story of Jesus, I'm blown away. Yeah. Let's do an Easter challenge. Let's do it. Ooh. All right. So this is the It's Gummy versus Real Easter Egg Edition. So there are two eggs per row. One has a gummy surprise inside. The other has a real surprise inside. So choose an egg. No picking it up and testing it out before you make your choice. Hold it over your mouth. Well, we'll count to three. On three, open the egg. Whoever gets the real egg gets to choose their egg first for the next round. All right. Great. So what do you think it's gonna be? Okay, so my expectation is something delicious and nutritious, but reality, it's probably something delightfully gross. 
Yeah, okay. Oh, okay, so this is how we're gonna find out who goes first. One, two, three, shoot. Oh, there's some <laughs> I'm glad we didn't have to eat that. I got glitter, so ah. that means I get to go first. Darn it. I'm gonna do okay. it this one. Okay, so I got this one. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> oh, I just expected the worst. Oh, he, he got the worst in me. Yeah, these are cherries. Just feel like I just ate really juicy blood. I mean, it's just cherry. Oh, well, I'm really glad. Looks like you have cherry lip gloss on. <laughs> because I got the real cherries, I get to choose again. This one. All right. Okay, and I'll go with this one. Okay. <laughs> My armpits are sweating. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> Very good. Oh, let's see what you said. What you get? Oh, no. This is sweet as fish. That means he got fish. I'm not making these connections very fast. I got tuna fish. Sorry. I spit it on the floor. That's why I dropped it to my mouth right here, right there. Here you go. Uh, oh, these Swedish fish are really sticking to my teeth. How awful. Oh, yeah. How awful, JV. All right. Well, I got the real thing, so I get to choose again. I'm just going to go with this one. Three, two, one. Uh, oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> well, I think I know what Jamie got. Oh my gosh. I got a uh, little watermelon uh -huh. gummies. I got pickled watermelon rind. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> man. Am I glad I missed that one? It's like a bread and butter pickle. I don't like bread and butter pickles. I like regular pickles. And oh, yeah. Wait, look, so keep that there. Uh -huh. Look, it, look, it looks so much alike. It's good if it's all gone, huh? Mm hmm. What was that? It, it, you smell like glitter. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. It really does look like a slug on the table and there's like a spit trail going behind it. My tongue feels numb. I can't believe that we have three more eggs <laughs> to go through. Please, no. <laughs> okay, so we will get back to that first story, but first, another one. When I was a kid, I loved bugs. Actually, I kind of still like love bugs. Honestly, my kids and I have these big aquariums in our house, like full of plants and bugs. Don't tell my wife, she thinks it's just a lizard in there. Anyways, so when I was a kid, about six years old, I'm wandering around my parents' garden and on the tomatoes, there's these three creepy crawly worms. So of course, I run inside, I find an empty container of Andy's mints, I mean, maybe it wasn't empty when I found it, but why do you all of a sudden care whether or not it was empty? It was, em well, it was empty when I brought it outside and I put leaves and sticks and these three green worms inside the container. I screwed on the lid. For the next few days, I would just watch it. Side note, if your parents ever try to limit your screen time, just go outside. This world that God made is so much better than anything you can find on a screen. Anyways, I'm watching this jar and I'm watching these critters climb up the sticks and eat the leaves and poop out the leaves. And then one day, my world changes. There's no more crawling around, and no more eating, and no more worms. And my six-year-old heart just dropped. And I'm looking and I'm just thinking, and my six-year-old brain wonders, is this death? There was a religious leader named Joseph who opposed Jesus's execution and then requested to be given his body so he could bury Jesus in a nearby tomb. And then a couple of days later, some women who had followed Jesus came to visit that tomb and they found it open and empty. And they encountered these mysterious figures telling them Jesus was alive from the dead. So they run away terrified. Nobody believes their report. I mean, he can't be alive. They all saw him die. Now, just outside of Jerusalem, a pair of Jesus' followers were leaving the city, traveling on a road to a town called Emmaus, and they were sad and confused about everything that had happened. Then Jesus shows up, walking alongside them, but they don't know it's him. Yeah, that's weird. Why couldn't they recognize him? Yeah, it's an odd but really significant <sighs> image for Luke. They're blind to Jesus for some reason. So Jesus asks them, what are you guys talking about? And they begin to tell him about Jesus, a powerful prophet who they expected would rescue Israel, but was instead executed. Some women say he's alive, which is crazy. It's all too much. We're going home. So Jesus tries to explain that this is what the Jewish scriptures had been pointing to all along. 
that Israel needed a king who would suffer and die as a rebel on behalf of those who actually are rebels. And then he would be vindicated by his resurrection so he could give true life to those who would receive it. But it's still not making sense. They're as confused as ever. Which leads to the scene where they sit down for a meal with Jesus. He takes the bread, he blesses it, breaks it, and gives it to them, just as he did at the Last Supper. Yeah, this is the image of his broken body, his death on the cross. And it's when they take in the broken bread, that's when their eyes are open to see Jesus. Then he disappears and the episode's over. So this is a story about how it's hard to see Jesus for who he really is. Yes, this is brilliant. I mean, how could God's royal power and love be revealed through this man's shameful execution? How could a humble man become the king of the world through weakness and self-sacrifice? It's very hard to see. But this is the message of the Gospel of Luke. It takes a transformation of your imagination to see it and embrace Jesus' upside-down kingdom. It's a battle of chick versus bunny. Cheer for the chick if you think he'll eat the most peeps. And cheer for the bunny if you think he'll eat the most. Ready, set, go! Still there, the little slug watermelon rind, just staring at me. Ugh. Let the journey continue. Only uh, three more left. You got the real thing, so you get to pick. Okay, I'm gonna go with this one. Oh no. Okay, it sounds good. Three, two, one, go. Oh, I guess I got the gummy oh! something. I got some. I don't even have to look at it, so you get a sausage. <laughs> what in the world is yours gonna look like? I got a sausage. Uh, oh my god! A whole a hot dog. This is like I love it. A hot dog, a gummy hot dog with all all the uh, fiction, all the fixes. How adorable! <laughs> 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 okay, one more. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I'm just going for it. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> oh my goodness! That's a gummy worm. I don't even have to Wait look at it. Wait a I second. Don't even have to look at it. Wait a second. I know exactly oh what this is, Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I didn't like... even need <laughs> to look I just at can't. a single thing. I know exactly what this is. It. I know so exactly disgusting. what this is gonna be. Cheddar flavored worm. That's really disgusting. Yep. What flavor was your gummy worm, Jamie? I think it was strawberry lemonade. All right, so this is our last egg, Jamie. And since I got the real gummy worm, I'm gonna pick this one. Okay, I'm gonna pick this one. Okay, here goes, Jamie. Three, 
two, one. Wait. Oh, okay. I got a dummy something. Oh, Debbie. Uh, uh. That, I think that's ham. Oh, uh. this, is a, this is a little, little piggy. I think it's ham or pork. Spit it out, Debbie. I can't understand what you're saying. It was awful. It's like a vinegar pig foot. It's a pickled pig foot. Pickled pig foot. Oh. It's a pickled pig foot? Oh man, I really dodged the bullet on that one. Pickled pig foot. Jamie, you'll be happy to know that we ended in a tie. Okay, that is, that's actually high five worthy. Oh, well, I feel like I like lost though. That is evil. I honestly wish that yes. everything could have been gummy. Yeah, I do too. That would have been really, really nice. You know, whenever you dye your Easter eggs, you know, the stuff that you dye it in, that's what my face smells like right now. A guy named Paul wrote the book of Romans. He wrote it as a letter to people who have been following Jesus for a while and to people who are just meeting Jesus for the first time. Paul spends the whole book explaining that there are only two ways to live life. One option is a lose-lose situation. The other is win-win. He sums it up like this. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, every person, from your grandma to your best friend to your worst enemy, has sinned. Every person has done something that has hurt themselves or hurt others. Paul is telling us that sin has a price that has to be paid. That's what this word wages means. Paul tells us that you can try to pay for it on your own, but sadly, sin is expensive. You can't pay for it with money or by being good or by doing good. It's so expensive that you can't afford it on your own, no matter how sorry you are. But thank God for Jesus. He never sinned, which makes his life the exact right amount to cover the cost of our sin and then some. To live a life filled with hurting yourself and others, and then to spend your whole life trying to pay for it is lose, lose. But to let Jesus lead your life and to let him pay for your sin and give you eternal life with God and to promise to never leave you and to always give you a reason to hope no matter what, that's a win-win until eternity. This last story starts 11 years ago on a Friday. A little three-week-old baby girl gets sick. Her name is Mercy. It means God's favor, God's choice to give us grace. And that last sentence I said is actually a line from a song that her dad and mom would sing to her to help her fall asleep. And on a Friday, Mercy starts feeling sick. And then on Saturday, she gets diagnosed with spinal meningitis. And then on Sunday, Easter Sunday, she's in the hospital and her dad takes out his phone and reads about what is spinal meningitis. And he finds out that for a three week old, most babies don't live. And the dad's heart drops and his brain starts wondering, is this death? Remember the first story where God sends part of himself, he sends Jesus to save the world, to bring love and life. And then on a Friday, humans kill Jesus for our sins. And on Saturday, he lays dead in a grave. And on Sunday, Easter Sunday, Jesus does what nobody expects and he raises back to life. These are more than just good stories. This is life. I'm the human who tried and failed to figure life out on my own. I'm that little six-year-old boy with a jar full of missing caterpillars and I'm little Mercy's dad. I was expecting death, but his reality is life. We're talking about God's favor, his choice to give us grace. Those little green worms didn't die. I opened that jar and I pulled off that lid and sitting on it were three white butterflies. And little Mercy, 11 years later, she's not so little anymore. She's a looper like you. And just the other day when I was writing this, I said, hey, Mercy, what's so great about Jesus? 
And she said, actually, I wrote it down. She said, his love, his grace, and his forgiveness. Like, no matter what we do, he forgives us. She said, no matter who we are, he loves us. You're right, Mercy. God's been trying to share his love and life with us since the beginning. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. But there's still a lot of death in this world. Not every caterpillar turns into a butterfly, you know what I'm saying? And not every kid makes it, or not every parent's marriage makes it. That's why Jesus said, behold, I am making all things new because he is still making all things new and he can make you new. And all you have to do is choose Jesus and live life his way. Okay. One big eggy pile. One man saved our world. He fixed our reality. And he fixed it with grace. So today we're celebrating Jesus and his resurrection. He is risen, Jamie. He is risen indeed, Ricky. Happy Easter, everyone. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the ride. ride. All right, this just Oh, me. yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> keep going. Jesus came to save the world, and Jesus came to save you. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your ridiculous love for us. We thank you that in spite of everything we've done or everything we could do, that you still loved us so much that you sent your son Jesus to die for us. God, I pray that every single one of us would feel your love in this moment, knowing that you love us with so much grace, with so much truth, that you see us as your sons and your daughters. You see us as people that are worth being loved. Still with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, maybe there are some of you today who you've never felt the love of God before. Maybe for you, when we talked about this idea of sin, that anything we do that hurts ourselves, others, or the heart of God, and that the wages of sin are death, for you, that, that made you feel this thing where you realized you were missing something. But the gift of God is eternal life through His Son, Jesus. And what you're realizing today is that what you've been missing is hope. And that's exactly what Jesus came to give you. Because 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to this earth. He lived a perfect life and he died a brutal death on the cross for your sins and for mine so that anybody who believes in him would be saved. And then on the third day, God raised Jesus from the dead, conquering death and sin so that anybody could be forgiven of everything they've ever done. That They could be made right with God, living perfectly in relationship with him forever. And that is why you are here today, to say yes to Jesus for the first time, to begin a relationship with him to be made new. If that's you, would you simply just lift your hand right now saying yes to Jesus today? All over the place, people are saying yes, committing their lives to Christ. And we're gonna celebrate with them and pray alongside them in support. So repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I need you to save me. I need your love. I need your grace. And I need your truth. I give you my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. We are so proud of you for making the best choice you could ever make in your life because in that moment, you became a new person. You have a relationship with God and that changes everything. So please tell somebody, tell a friend, tell a family member, tell your small group leader so they can help you understand what it looks like to follow Jesus. Happy Easter, Parkview Kids. I hope you've had so much fun during our very special Parkview Kids Easter episode. I hope that you're all gathered up on the couch in your pajamas and you're celebrating Easter, getting ready to go on an egg hunt. When I was a kid, my grandparents used to put dollar bills in the eggs. So you know what? I was more about the money than the candy. So maybe you're like that too. But let's pray and let's thank Jesus so much for coming to earth, for being alive so that we can have a friendship with him. Let's pray, Parkview Kids. Jesus, thank you so much for Easter. We love to celebrate it. We love those little marshmallow peeps and, and all the candy and dollar bills in our Easter egg hunts. But we know that it's about more than that. We know, Jesus, that you came to earth. You lived, you died, and three days later, you came back to life and you're alive today and we can have a friendship with you. I pray that we would never forget that and we would always, always, always try to grow as much as we can in our friendship with you. We love you so much. Happy Easter, Jesus. Amen. Amen, Parkview Kids. So before you go to your Easter egg hunt and get all that money, let's answer this question. 
Who can you tell that Jesus is alive? Think of one person in your mind that you can tell, maybe it's a family member, a friend, a neighbor, a classmate. Who can you tell about Jesus? I love you guys. I'll see you next week.